The Slaughterhouse movie you are about to witness was filmed in Katy, Texas, USA in the year 1981. Those who kill animals for food would be more prone than vegetarians to torture and kill their fellow man. This was stated by a famous Greek teacher, Pythagoras, more than 2,300 years ago. The slaughterhouse uh, two days ago, but we were refused by this Muslim who was going to slaughter 50 cows and 100 goats. Muslim calls this slaughter halal according to Quran, Islamic scriptures. The strict law of karma deals major for major with anyone who violates the law of nature. As long as the people of Hulu, this planet, continue to murder and eat poor defenseless animals, they will perpetually suffer the sinful reactions of their criminal violence and catastrophic. <laughs> Nearly 100 years ago, Famous Russian sage Leo Tolstoy said, How can you expect peace when human stomachs have become living graves of the murdered animals? Famous Greek mathematician Pythagoras taught, Those who kill animals for
આજે આ જે છે ને આજે
Sasha Rupa Sparta. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So you have just seen the most horrible of mood, slaughter of mood, innocent and defenseless animals. What do you think about this, Mr. Dan, uh, in this uh, movie? And this slaughter is permitted by so-called scriptures like Bible and Quran. Therefore, you can easily understand why the Christians, Jews, and Muslims are so violent to animals and fellow human beings. On the other hand, the Vedic scriptures like Manu Smriti state that one will have to take one bath for every hair on the body of the animal that you kill. That's true. And actually, eight parties are considered responsible for this horrible and senseless slaughter of innocent and defenseless animals. The person who raise the animals, the person who transport them to the slaughterhouse, the employees of the slaughterhouse, the people who sell meat, people who buy meat, people who kill, cook the meat, and people who eat the meat. And above all of these people, the people who tolerate, who do not do anything against these senseless activities, are also responsible and will have to share in the sinful reaction of this horrible activity. I want to ask you, Kantiji, yes. after you have gone and helped uh, in uh, taking the movie on this uh, slaughter, do you think uh, the people who have been eating meat, they will now think twice in eating any other portion of meat ever? They will eat so what do you think? I think sometimes people don't have opportunity to think what they are doing. And according to my opinion, I think this is the best documentary film. When they will see the real situation, how they are killing the animal, probably, you know, sometimes people have a real hidden feeling, but they don't have any realization what is really, how it happened, how they kill the animal, what they are eating. But this is the documentary film. I think when the people will watch really, you know, how they are killing, probably their deeply feeling will come out and probably I think they will stop eating this, this kind of thing. You know, Kram, this is going to uh, create a thought process in everyone's mind who sees this movie because after seeing this movie, they have to justify uh, their activity. You see? That is correct. That is absolutely right. But uh, can you give a little bit commentary, Mr. Conti, about this whole thing? Uh, yeah. mm, yes. Uh, what Krishna says, God, uh, what we must do, what kind of food we must eat, things like that. As is there in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Mr. Dhan, you can speak a little bit on that. Uh, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, verse. Uh, 17. Uh, that, well, everybody knows that we are not supposed to eat meat according to our Vedic scripture, you know, Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. But still, you know, people are doing, you know, seeing sort of those things. But the main question, you know, the way I think, the main the practical, when actually, you know, sometimes it, let us say that. Uh, Driving is really very hard. Some people think, oh, I cannot do driving. But when you really act, when you really drive, then you realize what, oh, this is nothing but it, it, it requires a little bit practice. So this is the same thing, you know, when the people will really watch this documentary film, then they will realize, you know, the Vedic literature. Generally, you know, our old father, grandfather, they are always just mentioning that, you know, we should not do this kind of sinful activity, we should not eat this thing. But still, we are, you know, 
eating the meat and doing this simple activity because of lack of knowledge, lack of information. And I think, you know, but I am very sure that, you know, this uh, documentary film will really help the Indian, not only Indian, but everybody, the people who are eating meat, and probably, you know, there will be a lot of good things. You see, the point is this, that in particularly the Western countries, these slaughterhouses are kept miles and miles away from the eyes of the people. And as we already witnessed, that we were refused to take the movie. And the owner of the slaughterhouse refused to come in the camera. And many, and also this uh, inspector from the state of Texas, he also refused to be pictured in this movie. So this shows that if American people really are shown the actual scenes of the slaughterhouse, they will certainly have the second thought before, put this, before putting the next hamburger in their mouth. So I am very hopeful that if this is broadly broadcasted uh, among the mass of people, then it will have a very positive effect. I thank you so much uh, for your cooperation in making this documentary successful. And as I remember and recollect this verse spoken by God Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, if you offer me in love and devotion, uh, water, flower, leaf, you will come back to me. He never mentioned that you offer me meat and he come back. There is no way one can come back to Krishna or God or Vekunt or to the place of heaven if he keeps on eating meat. Thank you so much. Thank you,
the year 1981. My name is Achare Charandas, and I'm going to talk about the principles of ecology, ecological makeup. If humans won't come out now from their deep slumber regarding wrong actions being committed un against the entire ecological makeup of natural laws inf influenced under the two most horrifying benign books, the Bible and the Quran, offshoot of the Old Testament, and or by their own self-imposed ignorance, our immediate planet Earth will face the worst consequences of environmental damages yet to be witnessed. Heat waves will rise up to 120 degrees or higher in next 30 years. It is time to understand the ecological makeup as laid down in the oldest text, absolutely consistent to the nature laws, to the laws of nature. Environmental laws are directly proportioned to the ecological makeup of our immediate planet and ecology is directly proportioned to the natural laws. All these laws are governed under the principles of the universal laws. The universal laws are uniform and are not different for different souls, staying temporarily in various bodies. Sunlight does not distinguish between two humans regardless of faith, beliefs, race, color, caste, and creed. Bhagavad Gita was spoken over 5200 years ago. Lord Krishna speaks in chapter 9, verse 17. I am the father, the mother, the maintainer, and the grandsire of this universe. I am the uh, object of knowledge, the purifier, and the syllable Om. I am the Rik, the Psalm, and the Yajur Vedas. So the universal laws are well under the support of our universal father, God Krishna. He does not create two laws for two different people, regardless of color, creed, faith, race, and jumble juggery of beliefs and thoughts. Poor, rich, it is the man's own action leading him to freedom or bondage. The entire cosmic manifestations, moving and non-moving, are manifested by different activities of Lord Krishna's activities. Christianity's translated syllable, Hindu syllable Om, to call it Amen, and made it totally meaningless. Material pronunciation, just like a wino beggar in, on a Chicago street asking a passerby, Amen, do you have a quarter? The significance of Om is unlimited for the advancement in spirituality because of its resonance. This way human's mind become a transmitter linking to the God Krishna and also the human brain becomes the receiver like the radio set receiving the transmitted waves. This science is very advanced and must be learned under the influence of great Hindu masters. If you repeat Amen 100 times, it will always sound like a street man talking, no meaning in his spirituality. You can't call Mickey by name monkey. You will offend Mickey. So Christianity is offending the name of the Almighty by its mispronunciation. Similarly, Muslims took the symbol Om and translated to their own suitability to Amin. If you are ready to eat food which is laced with full of poison, that food is not palatable. This way, the bondage of soul gets deeper and deeper into a 
total darkness due to the total ignorance spread by the most inconsistent ignorant texts the bible and the quran which are out there to rape this planet earth under their total control the does the sun belong to the earth or the earth belong to the man great indian chief seattle wrote the letter to the united states president about his explanation on the nature laws he explained that we must not try to control the nature principles rather live in harmony to its laws if we do not abide by its principles consistent to the laws governing the natural laws we are slapped back very heavy this great indian chief seattle knew ahead of time what was coming and what christianity was aiming to destroy this planet ecological makeup in its pursuit against the natural laws he very clearly stated that we humans belong to the earth not the earth belongs to the humans so it is time to get out of that mentality of subdue replenish control and have dominions over what flies in the sky what moves in the water and land this kind of mentality drive from the first chapter of the bible is extremely dangerous and must be condemned by all means for the survival of healthy environment otherwise all your accumulation and wealth will be destroyed when the environment take rampage toll on the humans katrina greensburg kansas tsunami are just few examples wiping out the entire wealth and accumulation of those who faced these devastation by the disturbance in ecological makeups in the year 1979 one doctor spoke to me if we do not eat chickens and other animals the population of animals will be tremendous i replied don't you see what is being exploded out of proportion that is humans he was calm for a while and then asked me how is it possible please explain we cannot continue to rape this planet earth usa uses 67% of the world's resources millions of acres of land is barren each year by cutting trees for christmas decorations which eventually end up in garbage millions of acres of land are planted to raise pumpkins for christians festival of halloween this is one of the major cause for the depletion of ground soil for further growth of vegetation these pumpkins are carved into jack o lantern on october 31st of each year these pumpkins end up in garbage next day what a shame to waste enormous amount of food resources for their stupid fun and game this alone can feed the millions of starving people in ethiopia somalia and sudan total disturbance to the ecology children are taught to become mean rude and disrespectful to other lives by the famous christian festival that is easter when such training is given to children against the laws of nature and ecological makeup of our immediate planet children become rude and insensitive insensitive to other lives examples are very well laid down by us figures on crime rates in the united states of america islam teaches to look down others as infidels these are the reasons for manufacturing hateful societies of our planet why does the white house require the biggest and the tallest tree to be erected each year outside the white house during christmas is it not a sheer shameful waste of resources by keeping such terrible arrogant attitude against the laws of nature that i am a big macho and i could do anything but no respect to to natural laws just simply rape the resources during easter Christ- christian festival millions of eggs are senselessly destroyed worldwide hide the eggs in different make believe 
nest around the house and expect children to find them as a joy of celebration. White House conduct this shameful celebration in its laws lawn on Easter Day for American children. Have you ever seen a mama bird? How much hardship she goes through in making a nest? She would fly from place to place to collect grass, sticks and leaves to make a nice nest in order to lay eggs. She, mama bird, does not live on intuition but knows very well that it is time to build a nest where she must lay her eggs for her chicks but the senseless fools and criminals go out to steal the bird's eggs and call it a nice happy Easter celebration. Examples of Jesus catching fish with fishermen having to allow two retarded men to walk through the herd of two thousand swine, killing them instantly by having them to fall off the cliff, telling his disciples to eat whatever is found in the meat market, and is speaking such ideas that the bread you, are, you eat is my flesh and the wine you drink is my blood are all against the ecology laws leading the planet into terrible environmental disturbance. Jesus himself had compromised against the laws of nature helping the fishermen to catch the fish and that compromise led him into a destruction. He was in India from age 13 through 29 and lived in Puri temple. There he worshipped the name of Krishna and learned the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. And there are several quotations which are in Bhagavad Gita he has extracted and, and those information have been put under his name. Why is ecology so valuable and causing environmental havoc on our planet? Read the history of inquisition. It just did not start today. You, when you read the history of uh, Inquisition, raping this planet for controlling the entire world for resources by colonization, offering the Bible to the pageants and ganging on them to expect 10% of donation to the church in Vatican, those popes have been trillion times worse than the famous gangster Al Capone. Al Capone was just an infant what Vatican has committed crimes against the old civilization. Order to cut the humans like carrots, rape their women, destroy their houses of worship, and the main thing they did took away their natural ways of living and replaced them with their fast developments by their arrogant methods in the name of fast developments and so-called booming civilizations. By the order of Pope Innocent, Jesuits caused the greatest bloodbath in the history of mankind. 24 million Mexicans massacred in one century alone under Pope Innocent order. Indian chiefs were burned alive, enslaved over 10 million blacks, great philosopher in Spain were killed or chased out. Galileo was going to be burned alive like other mathematicians and astronomers but later Inquisition gave him a house arrest until death. It will be interesting to read the work of Dr. Manning Maribel, Professor of Political Science and History, University of Colorado Boulder, Colorado, USA. Uh, and this is about the slave trade along the color line. Dr. Marib Maribel's research work appears in the form of articles and broadcast in over 200 papers and radio stations throughout the United States. Interest in how the white European Christians have treated the rest of the world is increasing in many academic institutions. Nobody is minching words or using to the fullest extent the varieties of freedom of speech. Love is not an imposition. Love is a free will. One can't impose the love of God by these dirty tricks and treacheries. Love is a reciprocal arrangement. One must train kids to love the nature first and all around him. This must be well understood that we are not this body 
but the soul within this body. Did Christianity change their methods? No. They just add here and there a few ideas from the followers of natural laws, what they had considered a pagan civilization. Whatsoever foolish ideas were created against the pagan civilization by Vatican, but in fact they were the highest civilized society of Europe. They were all connected to the teachings of transmigration of soul and soul's higher consciousness. All related to the teachings of Lord Krishna as spoken by Sri Krishna Bhagwan in Bhagavad Gita. Great teachers like Pythagoras, his disciple Socrates, and his disciples Plato, and his disciple Aristotle, they all followed the signs of transmigration of soul and, and, and the soul's consciousness. And that was over 350 years before Jesus came into the scene. They were talking about these advanced sciences. These rubbish and the most foolish teachings written by the biggest fool in the Middle East desert must be stopped now. Here is where the harm came from. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Cultivate them and fill them of their kind and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over everything that moves upon the earth. These are the very starting of the Bible in the beginning of Genesis. With these attitudes, they were able to colonize the entire world for raping the resources big time. Gold rush, that rush, not ever settled with good family life, rather running like dogs for subdued distance lands resources. There is enough on this planet Earth, but never enough for greed. Instead of subsidizing American farmers for making them sit idle and not grow food, they could have utilized a great wealth of these green thumbs passed down in heritage from generation to grow a lot of wheat, rice and other commodities to supply to the countries at subsidized prices and that would have brought billions of dollars in revenues to the American economy. But the fools are running the show. Neither they have the background in the universal laws nor they are willing to give heed to those who are knowledgeable in the field. They want to fix the environmental disturbance with the help of these scientists who are limited to their gadgets and instruments. Meteorologists can forecast the change of weather related conditions based on his gadgets, meters and instruments. But when it comes to the makeup of the universe, they are totally blank and ignorant. Only the great devotee of the Almighty God Krishna can give the direction who has the backbone in the science of self-realization. So they must seek the help of great Hindu masters to fix their own created problem. You have my assurance that none of you will be able to fix these environmental disturbances more serious on the way by your methods of brain derived from the Bible source because it has nothing to offer when it comes to the entire cosmic manifestation of our immediate universe. Earth is neither flat nor other planets revolve around the Earth. So that itself is a waste of time and you will continue to waste another million years in fixing this world with the Bible methods. It won't ever get fixed, period. From perfections comes perfection. Nature laws are built absolutely perfect and harmonious. If man decides to be harmonious to the laws of nature with respect to all lives and resources, then he can align with the natural laws binding all of us. Otherwise, the nature will slap back so terrible what he can control. Look at Katrina and other hurricanes. Humans run like the tail on the rear. Is the nature controlling them or do they truly control the nature? 
All the nuclear war, all the nuclear warhead sits in the silos. As humans know, they could not stop the might of Katrina. First understand that it is the evolution which is part of the entire ecological makeup. When the evolution is challenged, the nature will be disturbed. The entire Krishna's cosmic manifestation get disturbed. Billions of cows and other animals are slaughtered and eaten too by these humanites. Are you about animals or are you still an animal? Can a sheep eat the wolf or can you make her eat the wolf? Either way, it won't work with a sheep to eat the flesh. If you feed goat scrappies to cow in her feed, you got mad cow disease. These British boys went against the laws of nature by feeding cows with dried animal parts. But the nature has its rule. Under the total guidance of Lord Krishna, he won't allow man to fool the nature. Laws of nature are consistent and fixed, just like every day. Sun rises from east and gives heat and light and every evening goes to set in the west. Is it immutable, changeable? No. Soul is also immutable, unbreakable, can be burned and withered. Soul constitution position remains the same indefinitely, time immemorial. During Christian's thanksgiving, millions of turkeys' birds are slaughtered to give thanks to Christian God. But the universal God does not accept these kind of ideologies. Lord Krishna speaks in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, verse 17. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, I will accept it. Even the poor of the poorest can offer water to the Almighty with love and devotion. He is not asking for animals to be offered as God won't accept humans to behave inhuman and in the name of taste of their tongue. By offering the animals, humans have extinguished their godliness qualities and a total spiritual suicide. Animals have two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, mouth, anus, and genital, exactly nine gates opening to their material bodies. Humans also have nine gates to their bodies. Animals are eating, sleeping, mating and defending. So are the humans. What are the humans doing about the animals? Most are yet in animal mentality. Even worse, man created his own destiny and God simply helps the path he has chosen. It is man who creates the destiny of his own. Whatever he decides after using his free will in the right or wrong direction. Animals are directly controlled by the laws of nature, but when souls transmigrate, that is, evolve in the cycle of birth and death to human body, human is gifted with a free will. When this free will is misled under the influence of wrong examples, the entire ecological makeup is challenged and disturbed. Example, a life of a cow on this planet Earth is around 25 years. Chickens may live 3 to 5 years when their souls are forcefully removed from their bodies under the guidance of the Bible and the Quran, their soul must go on. It is the evolution of the consciousness which is being manifested. Monkeys don't evolve to humans. These misleading concepts are possible in the absence of true science or laws of nature and their principles. Darwin had been trying to find the answers, but he could not give the correct answers. If he had looked towards India, he would have had the jackpot. But unfortunately, he could not foresee that each animal has a presence of soul within his, her, nine gates body. It is the learning process of each soul to go through lower life to the higher life. 
consciousness of the soul evolves from lower life to higher life. These are learning stages from accepting the human bodies. When cows and other animals are killed prematurely, the souls in their bodies must move on to the next lives. After cows, souls accept humans' bodies. When animals are slaughtered prematurely, it shortens up their lives and quicken up the evolution process granted under the principle of natural laws by man's own foolishness without any regard to the universal laws he ends up striking his own feet with his own hammer what it means more human population explosion explosion on our planet and more desirous humans ready to further rape the resources and most souls transmigrate transmigrating to human bodies after their bodies were forcefully taken away by butchering them. They come as very revengeful souls ready to kill other humanoids. They get very serious psychological pain when they are standing in lines to be butchered next in the slaughterhouse. Especially cows can sense it days before and and many have tears in their eyes before going through slaughterhouse. Baby cow is chained in a wooden box, wooden box 22 inches wide and 56 inches long. The box is so small that the calf can walk or even turn around. Milk fed wheel is obtained by making calf anemic. The calf is not fed mother's milk he is fed an antibiotics-laced formula that causes severe diarrhea. He must lie in his own feces, choking on the ammonia gases. He is chained in a darkened building with hundreds of other baby calves, suffering the same fate. They are immobilized, sick, and anemic. There are no laws in the United States of America to stop the murders of these beautiful calves. Within weeks of their births, they are murdered and their tender dead bodies are sold as wheel for big boys entertainment. Many popes have been known to enjoy eating wheel a special daily feast. They lead very luxurious lives derived from the traumas created to the original natives behind the iron curtain. What do you think about this advanced country USA? Do you see any advancement? Are these the methods to bring one world order under their subjection? These methods are bringing the whole world into ruination. Lord Krishna speaks in Bhagavad Gita chapter 2 verse 20, For the soul there is ne neither birth nor death at any time. He has not come into being, does not come into being, and will not come into being. He is unborn, eternal, ever-existing, and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. Lord Krishna speaks in Bhagavad Gita chapter 2 verse 22. As a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, the soul similarly accepts new material bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. With these great teachings of body, mind and soul, the Hindus cremate their dead bodies, in true sense, ashes to ashes. Where did this idea ashes to ashes enter into Christianity during Christ Christian funerals by pastors and priests? They decorate their dead bodies with tuxedos and put them in expensive coffins in the ground. It does not become ashes to ashes under any circumstances, but the dead, body, dead bodies are eventually eaten by insects, bacteria, and viruses. They are still guarding themselves as their material bodies. They do not have true concept of soul understanding and its consciousness. Therefore, they can't understand beyond, beyond their limited nine gates boundaries of their material bodies that the soul of a monkey could evolve to the body of a human. Soul is indestructible. Hayes verse 18 from Bhagavad Gita chapter 2. Lord Krishna speaks the material body of the indestructible, immeasurable, 
an eternal living entity is sure to come to an end. Text 24. For we find this individual soul is unbreakable and insoluble and can be neither burned nor dried. He is everlasting, present everywhere, unchangeable, immovable, and eternally the same. Meaning, very well, soul never dies and never is born again and again. It is material body which is born and dies. So, th this doctor was told that if he, if he continues to eat chickens and animals, we would continue to have human population explosion and then these oncoming souls in the human bodies will require much more planet resources before actually their time was up by nature laws. Cows can eat free grass growing in the country in the pasture when man requires sophisticated house air condition all sort, sorts of maintenance for day-to-day -day living plus a million, plus a million dollar accumulation on the side in a locker. That is the single reason for the ecological disturbance. If resources are misused and the desires are impetuous. When the desires run impetuous, then the destructions start because we are limited for our immediate planet resources and, and the limitations for humans to come as human bodies are also limited. But they are prematurely entering into the human bodies because of man's own mistake created by clean, killing the lives of other animals. So my best advice will be to stop killing cows who not only nourish their calf, calves but serve the entire humanity with her milk. In the year 1990, over a million infants and children died in Iraq in the absence of mother cow's milk. Iraq was surrounded by the Allied forces who had cut the supplies of milk coming to the country. Here Saddam Hussein spoke, Have you ever heard in the history of mankind that my children will die in the absence of milk because the Allied forces have surrounded? This appeared in one of the American major newspapers in, in the year 1990. By nature law, an infant requires milk not chicken bone. Milk is fully nutritional, sufficient to build body, bones, skin. Most mothers may not have sufficient milk to give to their toddlers. They must get the outside source to provide milk to their infants and that is only possible by the provision of our Gopal, the cow herd boy, who set examples to the entire planet that the cows deserve the total mercy of humans. They are not sent to be butchered and eaten. They want to have cake and eat them too. That's the kind of attitude they have decided. The second United States President, Mr. John Adams, wrote in his letter to the third U.S. President, Mr. Thomas Jefferson, in 1814, Former U.S. President Mr. John Adams, who had been reading about Hindu religion, wrote to a president of, of the U USA, the sage of Monticello, Mr. Thomas Jefferson, about the doctrine of the science of birth and death, reincarnation. Mr. John Adams further writes, after revolting against this supreme being, some souls were hurled, John Adams wrote, down to the region of total darkness. They were then, the statement said, released from prison, permitted to ascend to earth and migrate into all sorts of animals, reptiles, birds, beasts, and men, according to their rank and character. And if they pass without reproach, there are several graduations, they were permitted to become cows and men. If as men they behaved well, they were restored to their original rank and bliss in heaven. Letters to Thomas Jefferson, March 1814, correspondence of John Adams, 
when you have brought this science into a total realization then you can fix the ecological makeup and consequently the environmental issues the emission gases are contributing only 3% of environmental disturbance 97% environmental disturbance is due to the ecological imbalance please note by fixing the emission of factories it may somewhat help for breathing fresh air but it is not going to make hardly any impact in environmental on coming changes unless we stop disturbing the ecological makeup which controls our environment look at little earth worm he manages to tilt the ground under our plants to grow food where a tractor can do that job they are constantly helping mankind to grow vegetables and fruits by tilting the ground they help to fertilize the ground by breaking and tilting guess what look a look at a beautiful bumblebees pollinating our flowers tomatoes they are all great assets for the existence of humanity cow discharges her obligation to provide milk from where we make cheese butter yogurt sour cream hundreds of sweet cottage cheese now they are raising milk prices the most necessary item for the survival of most infants on our planet earth because these senseless baboons are in the path of destruction by embracing jesus as their savior and then kill and kill and kill without any mercy as these animals according to the bibles were sent by jesus for their food what did they learn when they embrace a religion nothing an ignorant person can do many mistakes due to his bringing up of personal ignorance but when he must join the religion it must teach him away from ignorance the quran and the bibles are the perfect examples to form up the ignorance of souls who were misled to join them to a, to a to get a better answers but their consciousness is muddled and rubbed with more dirt by the loud thumpers than before he had joined these groups they become the most sectarian groups militants jihadis and or jesuits ready to strike anything which is different than them these are terrible damage to souls halting the journey to spiritual planets where there is nothing but an eternal peace total happiness and blissful life satchit anand me namaha would you allow a barking dog in your living room or would you keep him off your premises without realization those disturbed sectarian racist souls can't enter into the spiritual world cannot enter i repeat they cannot enter into the spiritual world regardless who they believe what they believe because when even a new born child must take bath though mother gives similarly a guru a teacher give the knowledge to a neophyte by feeding spoon by spoon similarly a mother teaches the child how to take his own bath and eventually when he grows up he knows how to take his own bath but how could someone die for your action i i cannot understand this point and how they continue to speak the same nonsense that nobody has ever taken shower for you nobody has ever taken food for you you have to eat and fill your own stomach you don't go out there and say my stomach is empty and i'm going to borrow your stomach whose stomach is all filled you don't do those you go to high school you pass your own exam nobody else is going to pass your exam so how can somebody can take care of your sin this most ignorant ideology what they are spreading in the name of religion and not making responsible for the consequences of their own actions is the most
police ideology there is to it and this is the re reason for so many retarded people are born right in the United States of America and doing a lot of killing and murder and rape and all these things. So it is the consequences of your action which is accountable. That is the karma. The karma binds all souls with negative forces or positive forces and then in between there is a inaction. Inaction. Naturally, you will require a great spiritual Hindu master to know the secrets of inaction. So the doors of the spiritual planets remain open when leaving behind your old clothes, that is your material body. Lord Krishna bless all souls to realize their mistakes and rectify them as quickly as possible. By surrendering, surrendering to Krishna's pure devotees, you will find the answer to many topics discussed here. Thank the greatness of a nation and its progress can be measured by the way its animals are treated was stated by Mahatma Gandhi of India. The vegetarian manner of living by its purely physical effect on the human temperament will most beneficially influence the lot of mankind. It was stated by Albert Einstein, famous physicist. He who attains true knowledge of righteousness from the Vedas attains a steady position. Mahatma Buddha Sakya Muni. How can you expect peace when your stomachs are the living graves of the murdered defenseless animals? Leo Count Tolstoy, a famous Russian sage. One should not eat any sort of meat. If one should eat meat, that seed of Buddhahood, of great compassion, is extinguished from Brahm Brahmjala Sutra. Famous Greek mathematician and a philosopher, Mr. Pythagoras, taught over 2300 years ago. The strict law of karma deals measure for measure with anyone violates the laws of nature. As long as the people of this world continue to murder and eat their two most benign friends, the cow and the bull, they will perpetually suffer the sinful reactions of criminal violence and catastrophic wars. These topics were discussed many, many years ago. Pythagoras had warned over 2300 years ago, much before even Jesus was born. If humans had paid heed to these valuable information and these topics of great learned scholars and God Krishna the world could not possibly face these many crimes, so many wars, and now it's time that we must understand and examine our consciousness and do things which are supposed to be done right according to the laws of nature. So all these ecological imbalance which are caused today by mass butcher of animals, and destructions of lands and depleting grounds by cutting millions of acres of land must be stopped by all means if we want to survive on this planet. And I'll say next 10 or 12 years from now, as I had stated, the temperature on this planet could rise as high as 120 degrees plus. So please listen to these valuable information and comply. Thank you. Jai Shri Krishna and Jai Shri Ram.